Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. It's a beautiful day. Uh, I'll find out where we are in a minute for you. It's been a long time. In fact, I think it was 2019. What we're doing a collab today, you may recognize them. They're here. It's Paul and Rebecca Whitewick. <laughs> How are you doing? All right, not so bad. Good. Where am I? So we're in Staffordshire. We're in or near a place called Frog Hall. Uh, to our west, east is uh, Colden, Calden, yep. and the quarries, and we're doing a little video about railways between Froghall and Colden and the Colden tramway. Right, tramways to be precise. So we've done this before. In fact, I think the last video I did with you was tramways, it was, weren't it? Yes. Yeah. yeah, back in 2019. So a bit of a genteel walk. We're going to look at some inclines and look at some of the uh, bridges and stuff along the way uh, of these very old tram roads. The interesting thing for me is that these are the things that predated the railways. These are the things that while Britain was still building canals in the late 1700s, somebody was thinking, <clears throat> we need to get these tubs of whatever, coal, uh, Lime. iron ore, limestone, down to the canal to transport it. So they thought of these sort of railway type things, putting rails down. And that's the interesting thing for me, because these things were the forerunners of the railways. And that's what we're going to look at. The embryonic railways that were around while canals were king. So this week we're in Staffordshire. And there it is in relationship to where I'm from in Manchester. We're just to the east of Stoke-on-Trent and Hanley. We're actually at a little place called Frog Hall that I'd certainly never heard of. Typical Whitewick finding these amazing places. It's very idyllic. Uh, we're just here on the Calden Canal. Beautiful, beautiful place, but it never used to be like this. Allow me to tell you the story. So we're just here in Fro a little place called Frog Hall, and we've got these lime kilns here. Uh, so we'll take a look round. We'll take a look at them. Quite grand structures they are. So this is what you met with when you pull into Frog Hall, these lime kilns, absolutely fascinating things. And of course, you know me, I had to take a look inside. All very nice, but if you're anything like me, you're thinking to yourself, well, what was all that about? How did it work? Well, this little drawing uh, on a notice board nearby tells how they worked. Apparently, these lime kilns at Frog Hall were of the continuous draw type. Um, coal and limestone was fed in at the top. It was burned and it was reduced down to quicklime, which was brought out at the bottom, and that's where we've just been. Now, quicklime was an irritant, and shoveling it from the uh, draw holes down at the bottom to the waiting boats was a very, very unpleasant task, handling this awful material. So this is the Calden Canal down at Frog Hall Wharf, and I'm sure you'll agree that despite my dodgy filming, it really is a beautiful, idyllic place, or it was that day we had the sunshine. The drowsy geese and ducks were rather impatient with our presence, but this beauty wasn't always the case. Allow me to show you a picture from around about 1904. So obviously there's a source of limestone in this area and it was exploited and the Calden Canal and the associated four tram roads were completely conceived as servants for Calden's limestone quarries out on the Staffordshire Moorlands 
allow me to show you some maps from rail map online and i'll illustrate the way where they ran so there you go there's frog hall wharf uh, just to the left there and you'll see the dark blue line is the uh, the old train lines the old railway lines those have gone We've pressed the button now and you'll see the light blue lines have come in and those are the tram roads that come from the uh, the limestone quarries down and they all sort of converge down near Frog Hall. Now I say there were four of these tram roads. Um, there were four over time, the first of which was built in 1779 and it was a very primitive affair. It was worked by horses, but basically they had to find a way of getting this very heavy material down to the wharf, down to the canal where it could be crushed, processed and shipped out. So tram roads were the answer. Now, like I say, 1779 was the first one, but a very primitive affair. Mr. Whitewick is going to take us on a walk and possibly blind us with science about these uh, these tram roads. But I had to get my head around the fact that these didn't all exist at the same time. Um, the first one, late 1700s, and then it was kind of modified. And then they built a completely new one, the third one. And then finally, the fourth one was more like a proper railway, um, much more robust. Uh, and so it kind of evolved and it converged on some of the same routes. Anyway, Paul and Rebecca are taking me on a walk just out of Frog Hall Wharf uh, because they're hell-bent on finding some evidence of these old tram roads. But I can hear running water and I got a bit excited at this point. I want to go in. Yeah. <laughs> so we suspect that this thing here I'm sat on is one of the engine beds for the, uh, the incline. Short incline just down here, I'll show you. Uh, but parallel to each other, obviously had something bolted on, probably a drum with a cable on. Two engine beds, like I say, and here's the incline. It ran down here, overgrown now lies what it used to be but let's take a look again what on earth could have been here well amazingly I found the picture So a nice little lane we're on here. Is this, I'm saying lane. Do you think this was an incline? Most, it's a mess down the bottom in terms of, unless you're, you're one of the local historians, the, most of the routes took this first part. They deviated slightly. I think the second route was slightly, maybe sort of 20 yards that way. But to do the first section of this route, I think most of the tramways used this part here. Did they converge here? Um, yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. but bear in mind they're all over different periods of time. Yeah. So they didn't all, you know, it wasn't like you could see four railways. There was literally four different routes over right. that period. Yeah, so, but, but ultimately this was a common route that they used. Yeah, this first right. part, I'm sure, um, apart from one of them, which I think was the second, which was slightly further north, most of them took this route initially. And this one in the final stage down to the, uh, the basin? Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, when you think of a tram road, you think of very uh, not very steep inclines and a very flat track bed. But this wasn't the case with the 1779 tram road that served Frog Hall. It was a very Heath Robinson affair. It was up and down and it was all over the place. Uh, so much so that it was so primitive that it had to be modified around about 1783. And I think that's what Paul is calling the second tram road. The modification of the first tram road that was done in about 1783. So we actually think here that we're on... The tram route. Yes. Although we're in a very undulating it, woodland. It's undulating, it's hugely undulating, but that's, that's, that's it epitomises the first route. So the first route built with the canal, they didn't really engineer it much. They just said, as long as we've got a rough route up and down the valley here, and as long as we can tow trucks with a horse, that was all they cared about. It was very uh, low maintenance, well, low maintenance, low engineered. It wasn't, yeah. wasn't thought of in a big way. Right. Uh, and what route do we think we're actually on? So this is the first route. This is the first. Oh, this route. is the earliest route. 1779, and we're looking for a bridge across the brook. And this, and this, this bridge that we're looking for, like original bridge built part. Yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, wow. I'm slightly bowled over. We've found what we're looking for. We've got a little brook here, and we've got 
two bridges. I'll turn the camera around, shut up. But this is basically 1779. It dates back from absolutely fantastic. He's got waders, mine are in the car. You never told me, did you? <laughs> Come down, I can You want to move across the paper? What I love is that just as the brook enters the, uh, the tunnel, there's like a step. Uh, a triangular step as it drops down and goes into. Can you imagine 1779 stopping this up to get the stonework into this uh, little uh, tunnel? I'll show you. Seen the bridge for the first tramway. What we're we looking for now. Right, so we're now back on the main middle pathway, which was for the fourth tramway, 1847. So I don't think we're going to find much because obviously they'd have ripped it all up after it had died a death. But we're looking for yet another bridge, uh, which this tramway utilised, 1847. So a bit, bit more modern, um, but it also takes us to the point where the second tramway, 1783, went perpendicular to it. So there'll be a few more bits and pieces to see. Right, okay. Well, <laughs> an 1847, that's like railway time, isn't it? Yeah, and that's a really, really good point because on this fourth tramway, 1847, they used proper iron cast railways, albeit they had three tracks. I don't mean three railways, I mean three lengths of, of iron. Oh, it, do you know what I mean? To and make then, up the the yeah. kind of like trackway, yeah. Yeah, so they'd have one on those two, which used those. And so Mr. Whitewick and I disappear into a conversation about terrain, tracks and railways. But all the time we're walking along this wonderful path that is actually a former inclined plane. And then we discover this hidden gem. Absolutely beautiful. I think what I mean about the uh, sort of canal technology, the big stones and everything. Uh, they certainly knew how to build bridges back then, didn't they? Absolutely beautiful. Right, here's another little gem for you. A little um, map. This is superimposed on Google Maps and it shows the four tram roads. I know for a fact the brown one is the oldest one, 1779. And I know that the purple one is the 1847 line, the latest, most engineered line. Uh, the other two, not quite sure. Mr. Whitewick, can you help? Anyway, this is the sort of terrain that the tram roads were, were covered. You can see here there's been a bit of a landslip and it goes down into quite a ravine. We're going up there? Yeah. <laughs> Alright, okay. It's quite, I mean, it should level out. It's just, you know, that first 10 metres we've got to get past. Shouldn't be a problem. This is where people say... Um, Oh, you must be fit doing what you do when you're out and about and you yeah. think, yeah, once a week we drive to every location and then <laughs> have about seven donuts along the way. <laughs> right, well, I'm going to run up there. Going to need a water break. You must be fit doing what you do. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so the initial, so very quickly, the first tram road was what? Bits of wood? First and second, yeah. First and second tram roads, bits of wood with a sort of a cast iron, uh, yeah, bit of metal on top and flange wheels 
and that was the first and the second. The second was only an improvement on the, the geography, so it leveled it out a little bit. So, the, so by, by the second tramway, they've not improved the method of rail, just geography. Yep, basically. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So the third, which is what we're trying to find now, they've improved it, albeit seemingly gone backwards, but they've improved it because they've used, they've used the sort of the more traditional tram road. Uh, technology which is the stones in the ground as sleepers yeah so quite sturdy and they've used l-shaped uh, rails so they didn't need flange wheels they needed just normal wheels like you have on your bike or whatever and they would sit either side of these plates right uh, and that lasted a lot longer that, yeah. that was the third one which lasted from 1804 to the, the big one was built in 1847 so this is a 45 year old uh, wagonway tramway and by the fourth tramway, they got it right. Yeah, well, the fourth tramway, like we said earlier, is it's very much back to proper railway technology that you see today. You still see today, you know, 160, 70 years on. Um, and they looked at it and thought, well, while the well, canal was still king, they looked at this tramway and thought, hmm, something yeah. in this. <laughs> yeah, you, 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 there's talk of people like, is it Benjamin Outram? Benjamin Outram, yeah, Outram. who worked on the um, Stanish tunnels. When he was building the Blissworth tunnels, I think, he was reputed to say, well, he built a tramway over the top of the, the, the tunnels, the, the Blissworth tunnel, and he was reputed to say at that time, I wonder if the railways are the future, as he was building a canal. Right. Fascinating. Wow. Oh. Right. Right here. Stop in here. Yeah, perfect. Oh, so, so what's this? This is it. This is the third, this is the third tramway. This is the 1803 alignment huge great um incline just here and it was very well engineered so you look at the masonry here so bear in mind you've got the first two that we've already looked at which are basically just making a cut in the landscape but this is now using we're back on proper masonry blocks to to build this incline look at the steepness of the incline too there you go i would have never thought anything of that little cut in there but that's the tram road leading downwards into frog hall wharf now there's these features that keep cropping up when you look at the maps of the uh, of the tramways and it's called brakeman's cottages now remember the big drum i showed you before i think the brakeman were the men that operated that big drum that operated the on the incline plane with cables on that were pulling the wagons up and down well, these are an example of those brakeman's cottages, so possibly some of the tram road workers lived uh, in this little uh, set of cottages. Right, all this uh, tramway hunting is making me uh, rather thirsty, and I demand tea. Right. And it then just so happens that behind the camera is Hetty's tea shop. Sounds Perfect. good, doesn't it? Sounds good. Let's go and check out Hetty. Just got a nice brew, waiting for the food. It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what you get on yours, because I've ordered like a, an egg and bacon sort of muffin type thing. I'm, I'm not going to ask you what you've got. Okay. I think it's something bizarre, but it's more to do with where he's from. Anyway. This... No, it's not my thing. It's not my thing. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, go on, go on. I think you've ordered something weird. <laughs> but we'll see, shall we? Right, so this final thing that we're yeah. going to, what are, we, um, what are we looking at last? Hopefully we can get there. Trubshaw's Tunnel. So Trubshaw's Tunnel. Yeah, so Trubshaw was the guy that built the last, most recent railway. Yeah. And he built a tunnel because he made it incline, flat, incline, flat, straight through the last bit towards the quarry, right by Cauldron, 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 is the Trubshaw Tunnel. 400-ish yards long, 408 maybe. But it's got some interesting architecture. Right. So when we've had this brew, we're going to go look at this tunnel. Are you saying I need waders? Don't know. Waders, wellies, trainers. Mm. Mm, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Anyway, uh, as soon as this food arrives, Rebecca's just waiting for the food. We'll um, I'll let you know what he's ordered. Right. These are cobs. I think that's to do with where we're from. It's a roll. I know it's a muffin, a roll, whatever you want. I don't want to go down that. Please don't comment about <laughs> the, what, what it's called. Don't comment. I'm not interested, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I don't normally get angry, but I'm not interested. It's more to do with the filling, right? So oh. I've got bacon and egg. Rebecca's I've got chips. Got chips. I've got chips. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, you've got uh, a cob as well. What's on your cob? <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got egg and cheese. Egg because, and cheese. Because why not? But you, I like well, egg, you I could like say cheese. why not about anything, couldn't you? <laughs> Surely cheese is great on anything. <laughs> egg and cheese. Egg, bacon and cheese maybe. Egg and cheese. 
Is this an Andover thing? Is it? Well, like, I like egg and I like cheese. Yeah, I like egg and cheese, but some things <laughs> don't mix. Anyway, one like James, it. all is forgiven. <laughs> Okay, so this channel has brought me far and wide. <laughs> I'm saying this channel because I'm thinking of other words to use. <laughs> Across fields that stink. Down a pathway, I use the word loosely pathway, but we may have struck gold because we're about to enter, as you can see behind me, a cutting there. Um, so, and at the end of this, we've got a tunnel, have we? Yeah. Okay, so this is the 1847 tramway, and by now things had got serious and there was proper engineering taking place. There's the tramway where all the trees are, and at the bottom of the screen there, it's got about to enter into a little cutting. I'm going to show you the cutting now, and at the end of this cutting is what is known as Trubshaw's Tunnel, 1847. Okay. We're going to um, walk along there and see if we can drop down into the cutting. There is one obstacle in this cutting. I'm just going to show you now. You take a look at this. We have a cow. Another cow's coming. Oh, don't come up this way. It is as well. Rebecca, do you want to move the... Well, just stand there. It ain't going to come in. It's going to go in the drink, isn't it? This is their watering hole, isn't it? Yeah. <sighs> what have you done? Where have you brought me? You'll notice, by the way, I'm wearing the uh, sports version of yeah. the uh, waders. Right, I'm waded up. I'm going down. Uh, the way ahead is very difficult. Um, Mr. Whitebrick's down there. Plan B. Plan B? Does it need me to come down there? No. See Professor Whitewick there is, don't get stuck. Just keep walking on that piece of uh, wood. And I'm shuffling on my bump, because we've got quite a quagmire here, and I hate, I hate sinking mud. But the tunnel is just ahead. Oh, God. You can actually just climb up there on the way back. Let's leave that stick there so we know what we got. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's hope that's it. I'll show you the way ahead. <laughs> it's not good, you won't you won't believe how sinky that is. I mean there I know. Look at that, there's a hole. I think the whole tunnel is gonna be like I've come to the other side of here. I'm feeling the whole tunnel is gonna be a bit of a nightmare to be honest with you. Uh, we ain't gonna be able to get in this tunnel because it's just gonna be full of mud. But I could certainly get you up to the entrance. Absolutely incredible, and there's a, a mist coming out of the uh, of the tunnel. Um, I'm not going to be able to go in there because knowing what the ground's like up there, you just sink in, and I'll end up I'll end up needing rescuing, and I'm not prepared to 
get rescued and need rescued in there. And that feeling of sinking into the, uh, into the ground is horrible. You'd know I hate that feeling. I'm just stood here at the moment on some, uh, I think, masonry. Uh, what I'll do is, as always, I shall shine the uh, torch down there and we'll take a look. Poor old Paul, who brought me here, stuck up there. You need to cross where that tree is, put a thing down and just walk across. So this is the Trubshaw Tunnel, named after the engineer that built the fourth tramway, James Trubshaw. The first brick was laid on the 17th of April, 1844. It's 480 yards long, and although the outside is, is circular, as it gets towards the middle, it's um, egg-shaped, it becomes egg-shaped. It's got very, very deep recesses in it, as you can see what I call refuges, and they, they are unusually deep, and they've got a timber bottom to them. As you can see, it's suffering now with the effects of the, of the, of the years and the vegetation that's all growing around it. The very fact that it's uh, not uh, not gated off at all just says to you that you can't get in anyway. I can't even see the other side of that refuge in there, it's weird. Right, so we talked earlier about the open it, over engineering a line. Well, this is one, two, three, four, five, at least five bricks um, thick, deep. What Paul stood on there looks like a keystone, which is strange, isn't it? Yeah, really strange. It's certainly got that shape to it, hasn't it? Yeah. Right, Paul's going to do a stick test on the mud. Hard there. Yeah. With the um, <coughs> mist coming out of it. Trubshaw's tunnel eventually closed in 1920. Uh, we climbed out of through the embankment in the end. It was like it was in a cutting, climbed up the embankment <laughs> rather than walk across all that quagmire. Um, I know you're probably thinking, I oh, wish you'd have gone in, Martin, but I'll tell you something now, I don't think you'd have gone in because uh, that idea of going in and start going in beyond your knees and sinking in is just a horrendous feeling. And there's nobody around here, as you can see, <laughs> that's going to come and get you out. <laughs> So, <clears throat> plus you're disturbing mud, and there's possibly gas in the mud, um, and we haven't got the gas detector with us, so, you know, again, you don't want to be going, once you get further and further in the tunnel, moving all that mud about, you don't know what you're going to kick up. Right, so there you go. A little bit of very old railway architecture for you, courtesy of Mr Whitewick and his good lady, Mrs Whitewick. <laughs> um, that was a great day, that, apart from... Uh, I feel like a pack horse. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you, Paul and Rebecca. Cheers, man. Thank you for having us. Thanks for watching. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Bye.